guys welcome back it is the afternoon on thursday march 28th and we have some news coming in on the real housewives of new jersey and we want to talk about it because it does pertain to the manzos and caroline manzo and her sister and her brother-in-law tommy and dina um they are obviously no longer together i'm sure a lot of you guys know the story and we heard a couple like maybe a month ago maybe that Tommy Manzo's indictment had been dismissed um and now we are seeing that they are he's being re-indicted that's the terminology I'm looking for I'm gonna try to give you guys um the details but I'm gonna have to obviously be mindful because we are sensitive and we're on a uh YouTube platform so I'm gonna have to give you guys a little bit of a watered down version hi yo yo thank you so much for joining us today I appreciate it um, we're gonna get started though guys. Hi, Ma hi, how are you? I'm so so good to see you and hear from you Monica um, Tommy Manzo has been re-indicted on the charges that stem from the 2015 incident that included his ex Dina Manzo um, I'm surprised I didn't think that we would see a re-indictment, to be honest with you. But I just find some, like, uh, you know, some tea I thought you guys might be interested in in hearing. So you don't have to hear the whole Manzo story all over again. But just a couple of basics uh, to get us started. We're going to be talking about Caroline and Dina, who are sisters. I did a TikTok video. Somebody said in the comments that they were sister-in-laws. No, they are blood sisters. Their brother is Chris. Chris was married to Jacqueline. So you had two sisters and a sister-in-law. Okay, that's kind of how Teresa got to know them because once you got to know Jacqueline and Dina, you obviously met Caroline. Um, Tommy is Al's brother, right? And so they married sisters. But Dina and Tommy didn't get married till a little bit later on in life after she'd already had a daughter and it was featured on the VH1 My Big Fat Wedding. Um, after that, they got divorced and she started dating um, the person that she's with now. They are married. His name is David, Dave, I think he likes to be called. And they live in California. And they had moved there because Dave had actually been assaulted um, the weekend that Laura Manzo was married, allegedly, behind a strip mall. And they had always thought that it was somehow affiliated with Tommy, but they could never prove it. So they end up moving to California. They're there. Teresa invites them, obviously, to film to do her daughter. I think she, well, one of them, one of her daughters, Dina's the godmother. They came home. They filmed all of this, and um, he basically, they knew they were going to be in town, and there was a setup, and there was a home in Beijing, and obviously, you know, that's a pretty serious thing. There was filled. They were. I don't want to use the words, but they were restricted, their hands, their feet, everything. I'm going to play for you guys a video um, that's on the Bergen County website as well. Um, the guy can, okay, here's the thing, Anne. So one thing is he was indict, indicted in 2020. So there's a difference between a statute of limitations to at which you have to charge somebody with a crime. And then once they've been charged with a crime, they have the right to have a speedy trial. And that is to it was originally just to prevent people from, you know, sitting in jail while they're, you know, going to trial. And if they are innocent and they're just, you know, sitting there, they have the right to a speedy trial. So he was indicted in 2020, but there was no trial allegedly because of COVID. Let's not forget he had 14 letters um, written by people, powerful people in the, in the state of New Jersey, um, encouraging the judge to give him a bond in the first place. Um, so within four years, not taking him to court, the legal system has an obligation to give a person a speedy trial and they have to abide by that because if they don't and they were to move forward, it's possible that there could just be an appeal or they could throw the entire case out over a stipulation like that because it's important. Um, so that was the reason that it originally got thrown out in the first place. So yes, there has been a re-indictment, but with so much corruption in New Jersey and Pennsylvania and that area, you know, I'm not I we don't know I mean he hasn't spent one day in jail over it and honestly to hear his attorney talk he has a good attorney she was like hocus pocus change the focus she basically went on and on about how her client could have ran and he didn't like I guess we're supposed to applaud him because he didn't take off <laughs> and avoid an indictment I, I guess that's what we're supposed to be glad he didn't take off and go to another country so we're glad for that. Um, anyways, so there has been a re-indictment and 
they're trying to make it sound like there's not a lot of like he was compliant with um the police and they searched his vehicle and they searched the brownstone and they searched his home and they searched his phone records and they searched you know all sorts of things and allegedly they didn't find anything to tie him to this the only thing they truly have is this other gentleman who was the one that came clean and said that it was orchestrated by Tommy allegedly. Um, he got, I don't want to say he got a sweetheart deal, but I think he did two years and that's pretty, I mean, that for an, an armed home invasion, that's not very long. Um, he also admitted that he had ties to one of the five biggest crime families in New York. And if Tommy is doing business with him, then what does that say? Right. He also allegedly uh, threw the wedding reception for the gentleman who did the actual invasion for his daughter. And there was a discount given at the Brownstone. And that's allegedly, you know, why the Brownstone was raided as well, because they were looking for evidence allegedly that they didn't find. So right now on Tommy, all they really have is the testimony of someone who's already served their two years in prison. OK, let me tell you how much more you probably fight to um, testify and get a guilty plea if your own sentence, your own very light sentence is riding on it. And tell me how much you're gonna care about convicting your friend who's also affiliated and connected in a courtroom on trial after you've already served your time and you're probably like, F the state. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, uh, if you have someone that is pending uh, a court or pending sentencing on their, um, you know, testifying against a co-defendant, it's going to be different. I'm well aware of the reasons, and that's why I said, of course, he was being re-indicted. He's not getting away with it. Didn't make sense when you said you were surprised that he was re-indicted. I think there's a lot of corruption in the state of New Jersey, and I think that's why in four years we haven't seen a trial. And that do you, do you, do we not think that that is um how many how many people have you ever seen their indictment get dismissed over a speedy trial even with covid going on this is the only one i've ever heard of he did spend time in jail his passport was taken good thank you for clarifying that i do appreciate your um there's no corruption where this case is being tried. It's in North Jersey. Good. I hope that that's the case. I mean, I'm, I mean, the reputation is not amazing. I'm not trying to be rude, but the man was escorted to his wedding by uh, by the state police in motorcycles and bicycles and cop cars. Like, we we cannot pretend that corruption does not exist, and we cannot when we see tight relationships between the brothers in blue and families that maybe have connections, we can't ignore that there's corruption that we can't think that everyone has integrity, especially because who's policing the police? I'm just saying. Hi, Sylvia. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys what was being said because he was indicted on racketeering. And do you know anything about the actual indictment charges? I don't, that's why I was asking. And if you did know about the, anything with the racketeering charge, um racketeering is typically linked to mob relations but i'm happy to hear this this man needs to be prosecuted i mean i, I like i said i've never seen and here's the thing like my dad was a state police and dea for the state of pennsylvania and he retired and got in legal trouble for a drug ring and went to prison. So I know the corruption that lays within the state police in Pennsylvania or New Jersey, like things like that do happen. So it's not an insult to New Jersey by any means. It's just saying, we know that this family, you know, Caroline, um, and that's great to, to donate to your local police. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you have people that, you know, support and support and support a, a police department and then they commit a crime, you cannot look at the situation. I think there may not be biased. You know, that's why court cases get moved from counties and different cities because they are fearful that there won't be a fair trial and that could go either way, bad for the defendant or good for the defendant, just depending. Um, it looks like the New York Post and, and also, I'm not seeing this covered anywhere. I looked it up. The first article I came across was it was from Bergen County and it was over his bond hearing. So literally right now, as when I Google it, the New York Post is the only one that really posted this. So that tells me something too. Why 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 don't other people pick it? If the New York Post picked it up, why doesn't any other press outlets pick it up? 
That's strange to me. Um, this was him. He was he didn't talk during his bail hearing. You know, he's a good looking man. Um, if you don't know, they were again, we're on the VH1 series, My Big Fat Italian Wedding, My Big Fat Wedding. Um, I think he's known as sort of a ladies' man. I, I don't know if that's true. Um I was hoping Ann would get back to us about his indictment. Um, anyway, rumors, of course, about him being a ladies' man and rumors of him and Dolores Catania allegedly, um, you know, I don't know, dating or something on low key. And she allegedly wrote a letter in uh, support of him getting his bond as well. So there was a lot of confusion, too, when people refer to these letters being written by Caroline and um, Dina or Dolores, excuse me, they weren't for a lower sentence because he hadn't even been to trial yet. He was just arrested and charged and indicted. Mommy. Hold on, guys, give me one second. Sorry, guys. Hey, Tay Tay! I'm so excited to be back in live again. I told y'all I'm gonna, I'm coming back. Hold on to your husbands, ladies. Just joking. Okay, Tommy Manso. Um, it says also, and I don't know if you're still here or not. It said he had a separate state and federal cases against him. So, um, uh, that was a little confusing too. State and federal charges. Is it federal indictment, state indictment? Um, I can read a little bit for you. It's basically, it's so funny how they reference him because they're always like the ex-husband of the Real Housewives of New Jersey star Dina Manzo facing a new set of federal racketeering charges. So, Anne, when I asked you about the new charges, that's the one I was um, asking you about was the racketeering because they sounds like they added that. That's how it's reading in the New York Post. I could be wrong. They could be wrong. And then it goes into a judge just a month after a judge dismissed the last case against him because prosecutors took too long to bring it to trial. How many times have you heard of people getting away because it took too long to take them to trial? Usually they don't indict you unless they have, you know, have evidence to take to trial. So four years is a significant amount of time to be indicted and not see a trial, even if it is COVID. <laughs> um, Tommy, Tommy will be arraigned in Newark. So actually it looks like, and he's in two different cities because he's in two different counties because he has these charges in Newark. These must be the federal on Tuesday afternoon for one count eat for on one count each of a violent crime in aid of racketeering activity, conspiracy to commit an assault with a dangerous pew pew and falsifying and concealing records related to a federal investigation. So that is new guys. Those are new charges out of New York, which are probably the federal ones. Then you still have the state ones, which are in the county where the actual home takeover took place, right? So federal charges and state charges are different. That's how you end up in two different prisons, right? We had Teresa Jude, she had a federal case. She was in a federal penitentiary. It's different. They, when you're in the feds, you can go to, there's prisons all over the state and those are the only, you stay strictly in federal prison. If you have a federal and a state case, the state case is typically tried first. You will do your state time. I don't care if you got 10, 15, 20 years, you will do your state time. And if you have federal time, you're gonna leave prison, state prison and go to federal prison. The feds will be there to pick you up. They fly you to Oklahoma and do your admissions and all that stuff. So I've seen it happen. I've seen them pick girls up from the county. I've seen them take them from the state pen prison. That's what happens. State and federal time do not usually run together unless if you have a good attorney who is knowledgeable and can represent you in both cases because usually you have to have a different attorney as well. It's serious. So um, his attorney for the federal case it looks like is Zach I-N-T-R-A-T-E-R -E um, and he declined for comment. Surprised to hear that. Make sure you guys are hitting that like button as well. Um, and if you are new here, make sure you hit the follow button. Check out my TikTok at HW Historian too. Okay. Okay, take your drink. One second, guys.
Okay, let's get into this. The new indictment in the last chapter in years ago drama when the feds first indicted the troubled 58, why are they calling him trouble? 58 year old restaurant in 2020 for allegedly cutting a deal with a mob gentleman named John um, to take down David and Dina, who was then her boyfriend. In return, Tommy offered a deeply discounted wedding at his catering hall, the Brownstone in Patterson, New Jersey. Do you guys remember? Oh, thank you, Jacob. I appreciate that. That's only because I... I conveniently worked within a penitentiary, but that is, I worked uh, for the unit manager who is like the third person, it's like warden, deputy warden, unit managers. So I actually got to see like what it is like running a prison from like the inside and her secretary and stuff. I worked with them for a couple of years. So that's how I have a little bit more inside than I, than average, but I appreciate you appreciating me. So um, this attorney for his federal case is named Zach. The attorney that we're going to see, I'm going to play for you guys the video, is a woman and she is fighting, I think, for his bond. And I thought you guys might find that interesting because, again, the letters that were written from Dolores and um, Dina's sister, Caroline, were letters to get Tommy his bond, not to get a lower sentence. So let's watch that video. It's only a few minutes long, not even a few minutes. Let me see here. It was, again, this was the first article that came up. They're not even really covering this re-indictment. I'm surprised. That does surprise me, Anne. Okay. Well, let's see here. Oh, no. So many, like, ads pop up. Um, You're going to see him in jail. He's going to be in a jumpsuit. Um, You're going to see his attorney. And you're also going, she's going to be a female. You're going to see the prosecutor and the judge. Um. This was during COVID, so that's why it's on Zoom. Hello? I'm not sure why it's not playing. Maybe I have to read. I already did that. Let me see. I wonder if they took it down. I knew they were going to. I screenshotted it or screen shared it, saved it, whatever you want to call it. Let me see if I can find this on another page. Like I said, his attorney was like good because she um <laughs> she was hocus pocus changed the focus and she basically like talked him up to be this amazing person because he didn't run when he was charged or he knew that he was gonna be charged or whatever. Like, oh my lord. Let me see. It's northjersey.com. North Jersey here we go Bergen Bergen County because the payment was made using the brownstone do you think that it will involve out it'll involve the brownstone Lisa um, that's probably why the federal racketeering charges is, is hitting there because now you're exchanging money. If you're, if it's, if it's state is, if anything crosses over state border, typically then you're going to run into the federal government. That's when they're going to step in. So that means there's been a money, some sort of exchange of goods or something going on across, you know, states. And that's easy to do in New Jersey because you have New York right across the river. Um, I remember Meek Mills, the rapper, came out when he was doing a lot of advocacy for um, reintegration and reducing recidivism. And he talked about the 19 years he spent on probation and getting violated for crossing like the Philadelphia Bridge into New York City, because technically you're leaving the state. And if you leave the state, you are, unless if you have permission from your probation officer, you can't leave the state and he, getting violated over that. So it's a real thing. Okay. Here's the video. Oh my gosh, did it start playing already? Is it? Were met inside by two into their homes and were met inside by two men who claimed to for them. The victims were zip tied. They were struck repeatedly with fists such as a baseball bat. With the male victim being struck with the bat and fists multiple times in the head, face, and body. During the assault, an attacker stated this is what happens when you f with a guy from Patterson. The attackers then stole the couple's new engagement ring from the Female victim, Dina Canton's finger, uh, $500 in cash from the male victim, and a later discarded debit card from the male victim. Flight risk. He's known about the investigations by the federal government and the state for years. He didn't flee when he was charged federally. 
He didn't flee when the state identified him publicly over a year ago as an unindicted co-conspirator in a previous iteration of this indictment. He didn't flee when the state searched his house, searched his vehicle, searched his person, searched his business, searched his car, searched his person, searched his electronic devices, his telephones. He didn't flee during any of that. If he wanted to flee, that would have been the time to do so. He doesn't want to flee. He wants to fight these charges, Your Honor. He wants to fight these baseless charges. He wants to go back during the time period to prepare his defense, which he can do far more effectively if he's not sitting in jail, and to give back to his community and keep running his There you guys have it. Hi, Anne, you're still here. Did you um, have any comments on the racketeering charge that was added by the feds? just wondering um again that was from the original arrest and they already did go through um they raided everything that day i think the brownstone his car his home and they you know he's not dumb like somebody told on him everyone probably assumed that it was related but at the same time if you don't have any evidence of it and there's no you know and there's nothing then you just have a criminal calling another criminal <laughs> and blaming them for orchestrating a crime you committed. But he's already served his time. They can't retry him. They can't re-indict the, the co-defendant. You know what I'm saying? Anyone picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah, that, that, that seems a little, um, how come they were able to try the co-defendant and not Tommy during COVID? Um, I was not referring to the federal charges, and you know that I was referring. Well, no, I don't, Anne, sweetie. I think you need to calm down, sissy. I was not. I was simply asking you if you knew because you seem knowledgeable about it. Anne, maybe you're not really Anne. Sometimes people come in, you know. Anywho, um, so. We do have him reindicted, and we have federal charges added to that. So now we have state and federal charges, which would be two separate trials, possibly two different um, federal and state. So that's going to be probably something maybe he wasn't expecting, and it's going to be double the money that he you're fighting charges now with the state and the federal government. That's difficult. That gets expensive. We talked about before that when people like Jen Shaw was indicted by the federal government, they have an endless supply of people that they can put on that case working on it 24-7. You as an individual are not going to have access to that sort of manpower, and you probably aren't going to be able to afford it. Simply paying for depositions and, and that sort of thing can break you, literally. So um, I don't know what's going to happen, but... I think that we're going to probably see some more headlines about it. I'm sure that they will try to keep it out of the press as much as possible, as they already are. They're doing a fantastic job of it. One article from the New York Post. You know, this is a big deal for, you know, New Jersey people, um, for the community, and for the Manzos, and for Dina as well. You know, she's living out in California, and she's remarried, but she had a lot of trauma from this incident, and she shared a lot of her trauma um, based therapy because she was not about like getting put on medications or for um, depression or anxiety. She was really trying to treat the trauma um, through therapy and like natural uh, healing remedies. There is, um, I forget the name of it, but my girls also have done it. I cannot think of the name. What happened to Anna Nicole Smith? I know, you know, Debbie, did you see a feed about her daughter? Because her daughter's like 20. Or I don't know how old her daughter is, but her daughter's like getting older. Maybe she's like 16 or something. And the dad like showed photos. And um, I was like watching clips from back then. And I was like so surprised that that you know, how that went, all went down. It's so crazy. But this therapy is like, I think it's, um, it's like somehow it's the same therapy that Dorito does on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills when her therapist comes and she holds on to like two things in each hand. And it's like a frequency. Um, it's like something through rapid eye movement as well, but it helps with healing trauma. So if you have trauma and you're interested in any of those techniques, Dina covers a lot of that on her Instagram. She also have, used to have a YouTube channel that you could check out. I don't know if she posts anymore like she used to, but she's very much into like, um, I don't want to use the word new age by, by that because I know that, you know, she is a follower of Christ, but, um, maybe like, you know, a little bit of like Buddhist move, like a little bit of Buddhist in it. You know, I think sometimes that's uh, what happens when we have like Teresa and, you know, we've seen her 
start to do yoga when she was in prison and self-talk and manifestation and like Dina's into a lot of that. So um, we haven't seen Dina and Teresa though. We did see them coupling and hanging out together. Thank you, Yo-Yo. We did see people hanging out together. They were coupling and they were traveling and having a really great time. Um, but whenever Teresa and Louie got married, I think there were some issues because again, because of this trauma, Dina doesn't want to be around large crowds. She doesn't want to be in New Jersey and have everyone know where she's going to be and what she's going to be doing because of the fact that's simply kind of what got her in trouble the last time because they knew her schedule. They knew she was in town. She was filming. Everyone knew, you know, at what was going on. And so she's very careful that she doesn't attend things where anyone that associates with the Manzos are because she just doesn't want them to know anything about her. And how can you blame her and her husband? I mean, that's a very, very traumatic experience. Did you hear the guy? What did you hear what the guy told her? That's what you get for effing with a guy from Patterson. Jeez. My goodness, Lord Jesus, the woman just wanted to get married and live happily ever after and spend your money on fake boobs and and uh, dresses and big hair. Like, that's all. And Tommy was just like at the brownstone and probably, you know, there's there an like apartment there behind it, beside it, upstairs and getting the, the dirty on with the waitresses and stuff. I will say though, um, side note, there was something posted online. I can't remember exactly what it was. And I think it was like a Reddit thread maybe. And someone said something negative about the brownstone. And people that worked at the brownstone were actually getting on and commenting. And this was like probably a couple of years ago. Um, that like, I just lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. Because I was reading that message. At least she's doing better now. Absolutely. So anyways, um... Tommy Manzo would be at the restaurant and they would be, you know, what restaurant owners do. I mean, I think if any of you know rest any restaurant owner I've known has been a cheater. I'm sorry. I worked for Italian men that own their own restaurants and chefs and, you know, they, they have beautiful families and three children and a wife and they're hanging out with the servers after, you know, you know how it is in the restaurant business. Don't pretend that you don't know how it is. And we always have the rumors about Almanzo as well. And this kind of correlates to why we possibly aren't getting the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip because you know, there was a lot of rumors that when Caroline Manzo went on to that girls trip, one, she did not fit in. She was with a bunch of women that she did not fit in with. Um, she doesn't fit in with Camille Grammer. I'm sorry. Come on. Anyways, um, she didn't fit in. And those women don't care about Dina and Tommy Manzo. That's nobody to them. What do they care if they're, they don't care about any of that. They were asking her, wanting to know what's going on with your sister, Dina. Well, we heard this. Well, Teresa said this. Da, da, da. She didn't want any of that out. If you go back and watch old clips of Caroline from Watch What Happens Live, anytime Andy Cohen asked her about it, I mean, she, what, they didn't speak to Dina. They didn't invite her to the children's things. And you could just tell, I mean, Caroline, you know, her and her speeches and her this and her that and you're a clown and. I have a prediction. It, it ain't a prediction, honey, when you called the police or you were in the room when they were called. <laughs> that ain't a prediction. That's called a setup. <laughs> like, it'll be interesting to see what Caroline will be sitting on. Oh, I know. It's, it's going to be, guys, I don't know. It's going to be crazy. It's oh, Dina's reputation. Yes. Um, she has a great reputation. Her and Dave just bought, I think, like a $14 million house out in Monticello, California. Very prime, prime, prime real estate. It's a beautiful home. And they seem to be really happy together. So I feel like I would trade New Jersey for California any day of the week. Okay. I love California. It's beautiful there. The weather is beautiful. There's not snow and ice and all that. Mm -mm. I would go to California in a heartbeat. So let her live her best life out there. She's probably dealt with all of her trauma now. You know what I mean? She probably was prepared for this to happen. I'm sure that the prosecutors and the courts, because she is a victim, they have an obligation to let her know these sorts of things. Um, 
And just like if he went to jail or, you know, she would have to be. Usually the victims are notified within like six months. And also before anyone would get what would be like a transitional control, the victims are notified as well. And they, they have an opportunity to um, object. That doesn't necessarily mean that the parole board will object that person's uh, transitional control or release or probation or whatever it may be. But the victim still has the option to contest it. Now, sometimes the legal system drops the ball. Somebody forgot. They didn't call. They had a wrong phone number. It happens all the time. Um, absolutely. I worked for the Armada Inn for 12 years back in the seventies and eighties. Thank you, Deb. Your restaurant, listen, they are, those servers are sleeping with the cooks and the cooks are sleeping with the servers and somebody's sleeping with the man. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's, that's how it's been every restaurant I've ever worked at. Like, I mean, there's a few women, of course, that are like, um, good women that are just coming to work, you know, but they're working the early shift. They're the first ones cut at like eight o'clock at night. You know, they're not hanging out by the bar, drinking Mark's after work. So, um, let's see. Is there anything else that you guys had some questions or wanted to discuss today? Um, I was surprised that we didn't hear from Dina actually when the re when the indictment was dismissed in the first place. But she does a great job of sort of just laying low and somehow she just stays, you know, she's very beautiful and she stays good in the press. We don't hear bad things about her. We really don't hear bad things about her. And I just feel like that she probably shouldn't even have married him. If you go back and watch the VH1, it's been scrubbed from the internet. It's been scrubbed from the internet you will not find it if you can find it it's like um joe and melissa's audition tape it's gone <laughs> it's been washed from the internet like it never existed honey you ain't never gonna find it it's gone you may find if you're lucky a website where a woman used to write a blog and she broke down every scene and she took pictures of her tv in like 2008 <laughs> and posted it in this blog on this website um I was fortunate to get, I didn't save the clips in the episode, but I did see it. And that's how I know that she cried the whole episode. That's why it was scrubbed from the internet. The Dina cried the entire episode. She spent over $200,000 on flowers. She had these little um, ladybug pins that ever all of the guests got. $500 each. $500 each. Like, they spent... A lot of money on that wedding but she cried the entire episode you see Caroline they go to the the dress shop and you can tell so you can tell that Caroline is being the older sister right she's trying to be supportive of Dina but what is happening is they have sort of a because because Dina's in this dysfunctional relationship over here her sister relationship sort of becomes dysfunctional right and so Dina would cry to Caroline about whatever Tommy did or didn't do and then Caroline from there would go to Al at the brownstone in the office tell him get y'all brothers together get his life together da, 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 right um they would call him into the office and then have like a three-way discussion and try to like rectify things and tell him to act right whatever it may be I mean it was like he didn't even want to take pictures with her in between the wedding and the reception because he wanted to get to the party the police gave him a like huge escort to the church and it cut Dina's limo off. She was on her way to the church too, but nobody cared because Tommy was on his way to the church and he had to have cop cars and lights and motorcycles and, I, you know, and she's over here like, you know, uh, it was, I don't know. I don't know how that situation happened. I don't know how if she just started dating him and like she even says dina it has said this before in interviews that she felt like caroline and her relationship started to fall apart when dina started dating tommy and she got money and she you know tommy had money and you know she was driving a land rover and or a range rover and then she you know they had a home in franklin lakes and that's when she said her relationship with caroline really um got the worst because Caroline was sort of jealous, not jealous, but in a way jealous, you know what I'm saying? And also that, I don't know, maybe she just felt like she had to stay with him after so long, after they were together and they started to plan the wedding and such. I'm not, I mean, I'm not really sure why she would have stayed and married and, and went through all of that. But 
I do know that the real reason Dina and Caroline do not speak and they fell out was actually over the show. I think it was in between season two and season three. And it did have to do with Daniel Staub and it did have to do with producers and then sort of saying like, we need to shake things up and this is getting a little boring and yada, yada, yada. And Dina and Danielle had already fallen out. And there was whispers about um, Dina's daughter, who we never met her father on the show. Her daughter's name is Lexi, her only daughter, um, was filming for the show. And there was rumors that her dad didn't approve for her to film for the show or that Dina had uh, not asked him and just, just, you know, signed off permission or whatever the case may be. But there were like, I think Danielle was sort of using that and twisting that and they were worried that it would get back to him or that he, you know, if that's your only child and someone's saying something like that, you don't want to have to fight somebody for custody. I mean, she had to probably, I mean, Danielle stop. I mean, look at how bad it got, you know what I mean? For a while. So she, that's what Caroline took that to producers and that's what made Dina so upset and enraged with it that they ended up really never really being right after that. And then everything just snowballed and eventually this happened in 2015 and then, you know, the arrest and the indictment happens in 2020 and the letters get written and so on and so forth. So that's sort of the mix that happened there. Um, I wonder, though, I often think because Jacqueline and her husband, who Chris is Dina and Caroline's brother, they're living in California now and they live in Orange County. And now I'm wondering if they are hanging out with Dave and Dina and they're just not posting it online because they've never lived so close together. You know what I mean? Dina and, and Dave have been out in California for years. So I wonder if they're hanging out with Chris and Jacqueline. That would be nice if they would. That would be that. Would, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind watching a little bit of that, a little bit of some something, something throw one of them onto the Orange County. I think it would be good for Orange County, to be honest. Um, what else, guys, was in the headlines that I wanted to talk to you guys about? Yogo, is there anything else that we wanted to talk about? Um, she says, this is great. Remember watching the Dina and Tom. Thank you. I do remember that she cried. She cried so much. She cried when she tried her dress on. She cried on the way to the wedding. She cried after they got married because you wouldn't take pictures with her. I mean, she cried. The whole time i felt so bad watching back i'm like why, why did caroline say maybe we need to postpone this i i know the restaurant owners it'll be okay i know we put a deposit down on the venue but it'll be okay i think people lose deposits the doctor i worked for lost like a six thousand dollar deposit during covid for his daughter's wedding she wanted to have it like in the the tree forest and covid and yada 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 but yeah i mean they didn't have to rush into it but tommy was like all about the party allegedly he was excited to have a big party. And Dina was a pretty girl. I just think that he was a cheater. He was just, a, some people just are cheaters naturally. They just habitual and that was probably the case. And now she seems really happy. Oh yeah, we did have Melissa Fisa announce that she was pregnant. She's four months pregnant, I think, which is a really big deal for her. So congratulations. I know that she um, has shared some of her, um, you know, miscarriages, sadly with her audience on the uh, podcast and that's so sad anytime we hear anything like that and we support her and we are so happy that she I think she's at a point now where she could share it because she's four three or four months pregnant so she feels like she's in the safe zone um so that's great congratulations to her I hope that she has a great and healthy pregnancy and you know she's in her 14 million dollar house on Manhattan Beach I would be giving no f's to any, I mean, I wouldn't, I'd be worried about my baby. Like, let's go shop. <laughs> Where's my husband's credit card? I'm happy for her too, Barbara. Absolutely. She's a great mom. She seems to really enjoy her children and her husband seems, I really liked, like, didn't like her, but I really thought he seemed like a genuinely good person. I met him at the Namaste Bitches live event. I actually spoke with him for several minutes because of a production company um, that they go through. And I was talking to him about some of that. And he just wanted to see how the event went. He wanted to know, you know, what our I, thoughts were, our, like how everything ran and yada, yada, yada. And so he took an interest into, did you guys have fun? What did you think of this? And he was kind of asking me my opinion on things. And you know me, I love to get my opinion. So I'm like, oh, oh yes, I speak up all the time. Yeah, he said, did you hear 
Did you hear if Louis was interviewed about the new RHO injury trailer? He was coming on to Rick and Kelly show. I, you know, I did hear that he was coming on to the Kelly Rick and show. Let me see if we have anything. I don't think he did, though. But they did say that. You're right. Um, Kelly and Rick, if you guys don't know, Kelly from the Real Housewives of Orange County does a show with her husband, Rick Lethal, who was a longtime Fox um, News person and so they do a show and they do a patreon and i think they make a lot of money i'm gonna be honest with you guys because they do a patreon they do a show sometimes two every day plus they're getting their youtube proceeds proceeds um i think they're doing good i'm i'm serious i bet that we're gonna hear in a couple of years they're like really booming um daily smash that's the way you gotta do it guys you can't I'm going to be broadening, broadening my genre as well. I'm going to be including some more pop culture and some other things besides just strictly Bravo shows. Um, but that's really the way you got to do it. Because then, it, you know, much bigger following and people to interact with. Um... might have something. Did he go on this podcast? No, he didn't. Did he? I, this must be them saying, this can't be him on here. Hold on. This time, this was three weeks ago. It says, Rick has another Daily Smash exclusive, this time with Louis Morales regarding his marriage to Teresa Judas and the Real Housewives of New Jersey trailer. So did he go on their show and we didn't know it? Maybe it was their Patreon, Lisa. You were right. They could have been the Patreon. Hold on. We got to get through their commercial first. That's what I'm saying. They're making money. Not only are they making money off their views, they're making money off of like all those other endorsements that they're doing. They, they're not having to pay a third party party or manager or nothing. I mean, Kelly looks great. Kelly is a great. Yeah. They're like selling these diet pills, but, um, or vitamins. I'm sorry. She looks great. I liked her. I always liked her. And I always said nice things about her, except for one time she got mad. Something I said, I don't even remember, but she blocked me and I had to beg for her to unblock me. Seriously, I did. Let me find this for you guys. Hold on one second. Let me get my volume up and I'm going to get my daughter something to drink while you guys watch this and let me know what you thought about it. Breaking news from Jolie's High School. Also a contest for you smashers. And Louie, Teresa Judice's husband, shares some information with me refuting a story in the New York Post about the state of his marriage. More on that in a moment. Oh. Um, so funny. You guys are buds. He's my pal. Yeah. Uh, first though, our ship station's up and running. Okay. That means you can get your pickleball paddles involved at a big discount. I'm going to search for that. Hold on, guys. Let me mute my mic um, for one second. And I'm going to see if I... Louie must have either spoke on the phone to them. Is that what you guys think? Does anyone know? Does anyone get their Patreon? If so, please put it in the comments. And hold on one second, guys. Let's see here. I'm wondering if he, um, Rick yeah, said. Show him what you can get, honey. Uh, Rick, show him those boxes, those pickleballs. Three, 
Rick said Louie's my pal. That's weird because you guys like weren't getting along for a while. Do you guys remember when they weren't getting along? And then I think they met up in the Keys and it was like awkward so they became friends. <laughs> Let's see if we can find where they talk about it. Hey, Brad. And Rick and I are on our way out the door to go pick up my bed. And we also get three to 500 comments typically on every show, every day. And you can see we're, we're crazy busy in our lives. We read as many of them as we can. I read them only in the first. If you, if you, after noon today, I, I mean, after. I don't know. Actually, probably taking too long to find it. Um, Yoga said I hasn't signed up for their Patreon. Me either. I don't pay for, I just don't really do Patreons. I'm sorry. I have like so many subscriptions as it is. I can't. I can't keep up anyways. Uh, yes, Lisa. Louis said the trailer made it seem like the drama was about their marriage when it was about drama with others on the show. Teresa didn't want to talk about it, but said Louis is fine about the trailer and that she's going to talk more when the show airs. Got it. Oh, I don't think she can. I don't think they're supposed to be talking about it. Um, also, I want to talk a little bit about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Did you guys watch the season? And also, I'm sure you've heard of the new um, Anne Marie Wiley. If you haven't heard of her, she was added this season to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And there's a lot of speculation swirling around her husband and some accusations of some SA. Um, she has since been notified that she won't be turning to the will not be returning to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And her husband has taken to Twitter to call Garcella Khan. He said, Crystal's a liar, that his wife doesn't support Trump, and if she did, what does it, something along those lines, and then he put hashtag Crystal Biden, I'm sorry, I don't know why, but that just made me laugh, and then he basically insulted housewives all over the nation, in all franchises, by saying that, yeah, his wife wasn't a good housewife, because it turns out you have to be fake to be a real housewife. I was like, wow, sir, we did not even meet you, where do you get your audacity? We have not even met you, sir. We saw one scene with you and your kids. That's it. Then we also had, did you guys hear about Dr. Wendy coming for Teddy Mellencamp? Ooh, that one was kind of funny. Do you guys want to hear about that one? I saved the screenshots, but I hadn't posted it yet. I think somebody else did post it. Let me see if I can find the words of verbatim. Basically, long story short, Teddy Mellencamp DMs Wendy from the Royal Housewives of Potomac and basically, you know, was trying to like buddy up to her to get her to come onto the show. And Dr. Wendy didn't even answer the message, right? And so then another DM comes through. I'm going to have to look at the dates. But it's Teddy Mellencamp again. And she says, hey, girlfriend, I just bumped into your husband, Happy Eddie, in the hallway. We're doing our podcast. Da, da, da. Like, why don't you come down and record with us? Dr. Wendy was like, no, no, I'm not recording with you guys. Um, and then she had the, the new, other new girl on, Nakia, who is Nigerian, and her and Wendy had a lot of issues this season. And so Wendy put them out. She leaked them. <laughs> Which I think is, I can't help it. It's kind of funny. Okay, it did make reality blurb. Here we go. Word for word. Verbatim. Um... Wendy titled it, got it, you at Teddy Mellencamp just wanted my attention, hashtag high care and hashtag RHOP. And it said, I want to see the actual messages. Okay. Teddy says, Dr. Wendy, this is March 1st, March 1st, 2023. Dr. Wendy, hope you're well. Your reunion performance should definitely be taught in Housewives 101. Would you be able to come on the two teas in a pod with me and Tamara next Tuesday, March 7th? We would love to chat with you. She never responds. November 3rd, which is Bravo Con. She says, just bumped into your husband, Happy Eddie. She didn't say Happy Eddie. I added that part. Um, she did, Tay Tay. Mm, she did, Tay Tay. Just bumped into your husband walking down the hall. Come on the pod today. We have a suite. We're podcasting at the Four Seasons. Again, Wendy did not answer. So when Teddy had her, uh, the other lady on, I'm assuming that they probably talked poorly about Wendy. And so that prompted Wendy to post these and call her a Karen, which I think she is on, on point with that. It says, Wendy is clapping back at Teddy after seeing that she 
and Tamara called for her. Oh, I didn't know this. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Wendy's called me back as Teddy Mellencamp. Who, why is she calling for anyone to get fired? If you got fired, you can't call for other people to get fired. I'm sorry. Tamara, you were fired and then rehired. So same thing. It says, clapping back at Teddy and Tamara after they called for her to be fired from The Real Housewives of Potomac on a recent episode of their shared podcast. After The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, um, 42, and Orange County star co-host, 56, suggested that Wendy, 39, should be booted from the Bravo series ahead of its upcoming ninth season. Wendy leaked a series of DMs from Teddy in which she begged her to appear on her and Tamara's show. Do you guys? That's funny. Reality Blur put, she begged Wendy. That's literally what they put. They said, Wendy placed a series of DMs from Teddy in which she begged her to appear on her and Tamara's show. She also got slammed as a Karen. That's so funny. Months later, on November 3rd, after receiving no response from Wendy, Teddy sent her another DM. Wendy's message to Teddy was shared just days after a clip of the two T's in the pod was posted. What's going to happen with Wendy, Tamara had asked on the pod via Bravo Bees on X. I need her to be paused. I can't help it. I'm really trying to get on board with Wendy, Teddy replied, of the RHOP star, who has been featured on the show since the fifth season. Then Tamara suggested Wendy be removed from her full-time role completely. Teddy, of course, co-signed for that. She said, like, by pause, I mean, bye. After Tamara agreed, saying, nice knowing ya, I'll see you later. Shortly after Wendy shared her post, Teddy took to X to clap back, writing, got what? That I wanted you on our podcast before watching the season? Notice when the DM stopped. You think with four degrees, you would come up with something a little more original than Karen. Does Teddy know who she's messing with? Does she know what Wendy went through to get on the show? <laughs> this woman went through hell to get on that show. They even accused her of stealing, like, a list of, like, donors for, like, charity donors, like, to, to climb, like, social status, okay? And she, she got a tummy tuck. She got a butt lift. She got her boobs. I mean, she put in the work. Just like, you know, Teddy have Latvian too. She just doesn't tell everyone that. And she's also scrubbed that from the internet too, allegedly. I've seen the article, I read it. She had Latvian. After she had her kid, she had that she had Latvian, I think. Yeah, it was like Latvian, because it wasn't quite gastro. And she lost a bunch of weight and then she started her healthy routine to maintain her weight. To maintain. To maintain. But the money was if she sold it as if the reason she lost all of her weight was due to her program. But it really Maybe it was in combination of that in a surgery, but I think still you need to be upfront with people because if not, they're expecting to get somewhat of the same expectations of, you know, the results that you got, which they do on her program, but they're limited to, I mean, I've seen like 500 calories, 600 calories a day. I mean, there's been a lot of uh, bad comments and experiences and people talking about Teddy's weight loss company and they don't give any refunds and it's sort of like a pyramid scheme and the coaches like they make you take your scale on vacation you text your coach every day um it just seems catty do you know what i'm saying like that doesn't feel supportive to me it didn't feel like good support it felt like mean girl support do you know what i'm saying that's how it felt to me like i can't think that you don't issue anyone refunds ever that doesn't work for me i don't think you can be a business and not offer refunds that's wrong you can't, I just don't think you should do that. And you're making money hand over fist because you want to know how she, she getting it all Venmo to her. That's another thing. It's all got to be Venmo or Cash App. That's it. That's all she takes. And we know about her husband. He read the reviews on his security company, not to mention that his security company was allegedly, how is Kyle Richards your best friend, but you don't have a security in your house? Oh, you had a security in your closet though, Kyle? That triggered when that's actually how you guys find out your house was getting robbed? Because you had security in your closet, but not your house. What kind of? I just, I can't think that she. They didn't have security in their house. I just cannot think that they had that mansion on Beverly Hills with their four girls, you know, in and out of the house, and had no security. The guy, I think, put a ladder to like their back window and climbed up. How was that possible? And, and that was like in like what 2021, maybe after COVID, before COVID. I can't even remember. And then. Um, who else? Oh, and then Teddy and um, her husband, they have like a rental property and somebody was killed there. There was a rapper that was actually killed and robbed there. 
I don't know, it's just a little weird that everyone in that circle has been robbed. Dorit was robbed. Both of her houses were robbed. Allegedly, Tom Girardi was robbed and he confronted the, the burglars, okay? So we can't count that out now. Just saying. Yeah, shut up, Teddy. You're right, Tay Tay. Don't shut up. Ain't no one trying to hear you. Why are you over here getting your, like, isn't that what iHeart's supposed to be doing for you guys? Aren't they the ones that, every time they get a guest that's, like, problematic or that people don't like or don't want, they blame it on iHeart. Like, oh, well, you just have to do it because iHeart schedules them. We can't help it. And then, actually, here we have Teddy in the DMs, like, hey, can you please come on my podcast? I worked really hard on the name. Isn't it original? Two T's in a pod. Yes, Karen. Wendy gave you the appropriate name because it matched your podcast name. Someone said, I don't like Wendy, but we all have a universal empathy for Teddy that for some reason no one in showbiz takes serious. I don't care about her and I'm annoyed that they keep trying to make her happen in this space. Oh, man. Teddy just, I don't know, people just don't really... Someone said, Teddy is a royal B-I-T-C-H. She's so miserable, it's seeping out of every pore. Wendy is also a B-I-T-C-H who values reality TV frame over her real accomplishments. Tamara is a twat who is mad at every person who said she should be fired. She is such a raging hypocrite. I don't know. Crazy. More like two geeks in a pod. I mean... I think people get annoyed with Teddy because she's, like, forced on them. Kyle sort of forces her on us. Um, even when she wasn't a housewife, she was, like, doing Entertainment Tonight, like, um, correspondence. If you remember, like, she was at Kyle's store opening when Kyle opened that store in Palm Springs. Even though she wasn't filming, she wasn't doing a friend of or anything. She was there as an ET correspondent. She, like, interviewed the girls. And it just was weird. It just felt thirsty, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if you would have came back as a friend of, I would have appreciated that probably a little bit more. But Teddy wants to be paid, and Bravo doesn't really pay friends of, and they certainly aren't going to pay her because they really could take her or leave her, and they just kind of do it to Kyle as a favor. When she is on Watch What Happens Live, it's only because there's somebody else bigger that, that the network wanted to go on the show, and they basically, like her father, they asked him on Watch What Happens Live, and he simply refused to do it without Teddy, and she admitted that because he said he had, he had no interest in doing the show, and unless if it benefited her, he wasn't going to go so I mean I understand that but at the same time then the only next time we saw her watch what happened live watch what happens live after that was with Kyle Richards and it was probably her support person how do I know that because when Teresa Judice was going through all of her legal issues they brought Dina Catania back on the show why did I say Catania Dina Manzo back on the show as her support person so when Bravo has a housewife that's going through a lot but they still want to get all the deets in the biz they bring you but they let you have a support person I heard PK's first wife was also robbed when she was at home. I can only imagine. I actually posted a photo. That's so weird that you say that. I actually put in a photo, posted a photo of PK with his three older children that we've never, I've never seen them before. I rarely heard of them before. Um, but we do know when, when Dorit or PK does give us a, a little bit of a history of how they met and got married that PK was living in the UK. And I'm not sure if he was married or separated or what the situation was, but they did have three children. And then he ended up moving to the States to New York City with Dorit because that's where she was living because she would lived in Italy for like 10 years um, prior. And yeah, so I showed a picture of him with his three children and I got so many views on it. I think I got like I want to say in the hundreds of thousands because people just, I think, were interested because they've never really seen his children. And I don't think we even know what his ex looks like. But what we do know is that David Yonta from Behind the Velvet Rope interviews that girl. I can never remember her name. And I always feel bad that I can't remember her name, but she's the one that had the affair with Tiger Woods. Um, he has her on his podcast. She dated him. Briefly, Rachel, is it you could tell? I think that's how you say it. Rachel, you could tell. She dated PK. She admitted it. And yes, they had the, they did the, the biz. And she said that his personality helped. I'm like, his personality or his wallet? I mean, what year exactly was this? Was this before bankrupt or after? When was this? 
must have been pre Doritho or he, she wouldn't have said it. I cannot think that she would have said that. Right? Just saying. She's a pretty girl. She doesn't look as the same as she used to look. And she also went to that same school that um, Raquel or Rachel from Vanderpump Rules, when she went to that program in, I think it was in Arizona. Sedona, maybe not Sedona, but I think Arizona. Um, for like that 30 some days after the whole scandal uh, took place, she also was at that same place getting treatment um, after the Tiger Woods affair. Rachel, you could tell, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's on David Yontov's podcast sometimes. And um, she's talked about PK and, you know, you know, they talked about it. So maybe you guys will go listen if you feel like it. But if not, that's fine too. Make sure that you guys have hit that like button. Follow and put your alerts on. I told you guys I'm bringing you guys more live content trying to every day probably won't be every day but at least like every other day wednesdays and thursdays um my cat had kittens she had two kittens yesterday i was like filming and i heard yeah. oh. oh my gosh what is that and i went in my cat was having kittens so we have two new family members <laughs> um so i'm gonna go tend to the kittens and i'll try to post some pictures for you guys i have such a hard time uploading stuff to youtube it takes so long that's why i really try to do lives um, and I don't post a lot in the community because it just takes forever. So if you are on TikTok, look up my account, HW Historian with the number two. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter, aka X. And you can also email me directly at housewifehistorian2022 at gmail.com. I also do TikTok reviews on different stuff on the TikTok shop. So if you are a TikToker and you're into TikTok shop, it's a good thing to check out because I review, like give you honest reviews on stuff that you may see, you know, other influencers buying that they're like trying really hard to sell you and I'm giving you an honest. And I have, um, what am I, today I have a juicer. Today I'm gonna do my review on a juicer. So if you're interested, check out my TikTok. Have a great day guys, thank you. Make sure you hit the like and follow button. Yo, yo, thank you so much for controlling the room. I appreciate you, bye guys.